Welcome to Professionalizing Entrepreneurship Podcast. This week, we're going to talk about nurturing entrepreneurship in the different settings, experiments, failures. How do you learn and grow from each experience? I'm with the co-creators of the Professional Practice in Entrepreneurship, Dr. Ainuro Rosli of Brunel University, London, a reader in entrepreneurship and enterprise, as well as Dr. Jane Cheng, founder of Gritsy Social Enterprise London. Let's take it away and let's talk about nurturing entrepreneurship in the various different ways. Well, I like to talk about this in a different setting. Again, re- referring to our first episode, whether entrepreneurship can be trained or it's born. So we are giving three different settings to show that, to showcase that actually entrepreneurship can be trained and taught. So maybe, uh, Ainuru, can you say something about what we do? Yes, I mean, we, we do a lot of experiment, um, you know. <laughs> I mean, um, if, if something that we realize is if you want the students to experiment and explore, we ourselves as educators have to do the same. So, you know, we have experimented um, different settings on to see whether it works or not. So, you know, the same methods that we use in our um, higher education in the UK, you know, we have a B entrepreneurship, we have a pathway entrepreneurship, and we have a MSc entrepreneurship. Now, we also have three projects. Number one is actually a Newton Mobility um, project supported by British Council, where we look into... Um, the rural poor. So using the same methods, we use it with the rural poor. It works. Perhaps um, we can talk a little bit about the method. The method itself. Yes, the method itself. <laughs> the yeah, method yeah. itself. Because I am totally interested and I'm sure a lot of people would be as well. The method itself. The method is actually basically just based on the practice theory that we use. And the first thing is the method is you've got to be on the job. You have to practice. Mm-hmm. You have to experience the method. It allows you to, you have to embody Okay, that's the method. But of course, we have lots of learning tools that we use. And one of them is you must have business projects, learning contracts. Where do you want, what do you want to achieve? The learning contract. And the learning contract is about being critical, having the critical reflexivity and reflection, able to evaluate what is pre and post. It's about the thinking skill. We call it the entrepreneurial thinking. Mm-hmm. Require what do you need? Again, it goes back to resource mobilization in our first episode. What was the resor- uh, resources that are needed to make it better? So you're constantly assessing the resources, evaluating the resources to create the value that you want to achieve. So that's what we are, the method that we're using. Another method is the team learning. This is maybe oh, that's, talk that's, about. that's very, very important. I think mm. that's differentiate uh, the way we do things compared to others. L- you know, we don't, um, we don't focus on individual um, entrepreneurs. We emphasize more on team, entrepreneurial team learning. So we call our, our, our students teampreneurs. Um, so uh, in a way, they, they realize how to work in a team. You know, if you go to, if you want to apply to accelerators, for example, Unless you have a team, you won't be a, being able to accept, be accepted. So, you know, the, the importance of being in a team is, is the crucial element. Not only that, it's actually how do you actually coordinate yourself across the team matters. And then I think that is a skill that, that you know, that, that we, we try to instill in, in the team. And both of us are actually a team coach, entrepreneur, um, entrepreneur team mm-hmm. coach. Um, we've been trained um, in, in, team, um, in a team academia approach um, in Finland. So how, how we do things is like in, in maybe in the project, in Baluran project, your project. Yeah, then. I think in order to think, the, the learning process is about learn to appreciate the failures. Yeah. Failures le- teach you how to grow. Mm-hmm. With that mindset of failures teach me how to grow. Learn to appreciate, embrace failures. That's where you have the learning journey that allows you want to grow. And that growth is through the res- assessment of the resource mobilization. How do you grow through your own resources and the resources around your team? Or around your stakeholders. So that's really... So in order to have this, you need to have experience. An experiment. An experimentation. Mm. So when you experiment this with the social community, for example, it means that you will take the students um, on ground uh, to the grassroots level and work with them, but using the you, you, using perhaps the, uh, the ways which has been defined, for example, team learning yes. or value system where mm. you keep asking what kind of a contract, what kind of learning contract you are getting out of this and consistently keep asking, keep yes. asking. Mm-hmm. So perhaps now we can talk about the results of um, the various different settings. Well, in the Bulran project, this is really interesting because it's really in the middle of jungle mm. in, Sa- in Sabah. We can't reach them. 
through uh, what you call normal telecommunication, except through the broadband uh, uh, cell com mobile phone. Right. So we decided that okay, I'm in UK. What do I do with? How do I reach them? So what we did was in that project, we trained the local uh, five coaches who are PhD students, uh, master students, and then they train the Buluran people. And so they go five times, and we use the mobile technology, the smartphone. But of course, we were thinking about developing all these fancy gadget called apps. Right. But we were thinking, and one of them was saying, why do we have to create apps? Spend the money where we have WhatsApp and the Facebooks. So eventually, we used the Facebook and the apps to actually to have a constant coaching session between myself in UK with the coaches in Sabah. And then while they are coaching the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the smallholders in Baluran, it's on real time. What are they coaching the Baluran communities on? On, on actually entrepreneurial learning, using what you have to build what you want to build for your community. So these people, they are, you know, they, they, they do, um, what do you call it? Uh, they are smallholders. Smallholders in Klapa Sawit. Um, yeah. Palm oil. Palm, palm oil. oil. Yeah, palm oil. And because the prices of palm oil is, is fluctuation, right? Let's fluctuate and they don't really know how much they're going to get and um, so on. So what we're trying to, so, to do is actually they, to look into their, what kind of resources that they have, you know, for them to, to, um, to expand and grow. And rather than, you know, telling, right, you could actually do this, you could actually do that. It needs to come from them because what, we want to emphasize here is about the sustainability. What we do not want is when we go there and intervene and then when we go out, you know, all the businesses that they, the new businesses that they're trying to do collapse. And I think this is a, the problem with a lot of intervention in rural rural area. So rather ra- using the methods of entrepreneurial team learning, we managed to create a community. So they are supporting each other and they started to understand that each of them have their own skills and interests. So one of them, for example, they, um, he, he, he did the, what do you call it? The, um, Kolam, kolam ikan. So, yeah, the fish pond. The fish it pond. was his hobby. <laughs> yes, his hobby. And then he was saying, oh, it's just my hobby, you know, I fish, I love fish. And then the fish it will be for my f- family. And then he said, how am I going to get the, reach the market? Now, now the, the, the coaches have trained him to realize that this, you can actually increase your supply of fish. And now he can use the mobile, the WhatsApp for, uh, you know, for, for, the, ordering. Ca- for the ordering. And now he was telling us, it, it was on TV that, you know, now even the fish, the small little fish that, you know, is already uh, being oh. ordered. Wow, that's how demanding. That's so, uh, waiting list already. That what we have. have, what we have done is we have trained them to be aware that the power is within them. Yeah. They have the resources to build what they want, so because their desire is to have education, a good, uh, a good living for their children, the next generation. Right. And what is the other big learning uh, you mentioned earlier in the episode that um, experiment is the way to go? And clearly with experiments, as we all know, well, I was a science student. So <laughs> it, it's really to do with a lot of um, uh, results not going in the way we wanted it to go yeah. and, and dealing with that, right? Yes. So Because the question that you will ask when, let's say, if you expected result A to happen and A didn't happen, mm-hmm. yep. chances of you thinking that perhaps I did it wrong and completely change the experiment and everything to do with the experiment rather than looking at it and looking at each variable and saying, okay, maybe this is the part of the entire experiment that didn't work. I will switch this around. Mm-hmm. So how, how is that applied in, in real life, in, in these real settings where it's no longer a classroom setting? For example, we use the coaching method. To, to guide our participants, to help them. Say, okay, you want to reach this destination, you want to have a sale of your fish, and look at why your fish is not growing. Why is it that it's not growing? Then they start to read more about, oh, what, is, what does it need to make my fish grow bigger? Oh, why is it that I'm not having sales? They start mm-hmm. to look at themselves. Oh, I don't know how to use WhatsApp. I could have used WhatsApp. So they start thinking within themselves, rather than we, we give you the instruction. Them. Oh, you need to use WhatsApp. You need. No, we make them think. So, which means you plant the seed. We yeah. plant the seed, yeah. Mm. So, in that way, it's more sustainable rather than, you know, what hap- because what we were thinking is what happened when, when we don't have the funding anymore to support them. And we do not want all of the efforts actually go to waste because they have the capacity to do it, but they need to find the motivation and passion that and, and, and confidence that they can actually do it. And, and rather getting it from outside, they need to know that it's actually coming from the inside. And these are the coaching methods that we do in a team together, uh, you know, in, in their own community to, for, to make them realize that actually they can actually do it. Would this be a long drawn out 
experiment then? <laughs> Would this be a long Yeah, project? it was like, you know, being an academic outside, we thought, okay, you learn about this experiment within one year. Then we realised, because we are dealing with human, rural, real human, rural real people, human. it takes, so it took us about two years to make them aware of that. But of course, at the end of the day, they realised that they need a community to help each other. And I remember one of them was saying, you know, one of the members had, are short of cash because they don't have banks. So they become, they lend each other the money to help each other. And now they learn to share information. This is really important in the team is they share information. If you need resources, oh, I have one. I can help you. Mm -hmm. So they help each other. So this is really important. Now they even set up a community where they have a tamu am among themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not just the 15 participants, but the whole community. The village. The village can wow. actually they created Benefit. their own market so that they can actually trade because it's quite far. You know, it takes us. It took us like around eight hours drive to go into that. that, that and village. there's no banks. There's no banks nearby, so, so they, they need to create you know um, a sustainable way for them to to trade. You know, um, and that's I think that for that project it took us around two years. Two years. But we also experiment ourselves. You know, with um, for example in Haringey Council. So it's actually a. Um, a, a borough in, in London. This borough is where, um, you know, the London riot started. So we work quite closely with the borough uh, to re as a part of a regeneration process. And so we we train um, the, the entrepreneurial team learning with 15 aspiring entrepreneurs. So bear in mind that half of them are actually under benefit. Um, so, you know, um, but that one is only took us around 15 weeks. Project, 15 weeks, yeah. 15, 15 but weeks it's 15 project. hard weeks, actually. It's hard weeks. Maybe four months. Four months, four really, months yeah. to really... One of the... The lady that we, I was coaching, her name is Paula. She was on, she's a single mother. She was on, she's on benefit. And, you know, she's constantly complained. I remember when we have to select uh, participants and she was one of them standing there, you know, complaining, government not giving this, government. So there's this high level of entitlement. Ex entitlement right, right. Yeah. So going through this, the 15 week with us, she's a completely changed mindset person. She just wants to grow. She's not expecting the government to help. She's thinking about her next generation, her children. And she was saying that how her children actually become also independent, become resourceful as well. I want to be a believer. So let's imagine that I am Paula. <laughs> <laughs> and I am now complaining to you and telling you, Dr. Jane, you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I need all this help and all this help are nowhere to be seen. I need... You know, I need money to feed my child. I need a job. Um, and then when I go to the job, what happened to my kid? Those things, who takes care of them? Who takes care of me? How can I ever snap out of this? It's impossible. Yes, it was almost impossible. She was really at the lowest, lowest ebb of her life. She was out of job. She was single and she was changing from, you know, because of the, on benefits. She was changing from one house to another house with four kids. It was what would you say to me as Paula? As Paula, I said, what do you want in your life? What do you want to achieve? And then we start looking at what are the skills that you have looking at you? So we call it the bird in hand principles. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, I can do so many. When she became aware that she has all the resources within her, then she realized that she can actually build a dream for herself. And her dream was to build the pink cushion company, which she actually set it up. Yeah, by the end of fifteen, uh, the four months, actually, she managed yeah. to set up the, the... Now she's very active on the Instagram. If you go to the pink cushion, she's there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she's showing what she has. But so, I think I think the most the most important one is actually to be part of the community. So, you know, you need to start to open up, you know, to express your emotion and to express your vulnerability, vulnerability yes. you know, to the team and trust the team that they are actually working on it together. Um, and so you build a team of uh, people on the street, for example. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's and what we then do. they they need to rely on each other yeah. for support, support, information, yes. information, and every um, week, every Wednesday night. So it's like meet. at night we will meet. we will meet with them every Wednesday night. We finish at eight o'clock at night. Uh, so we started at five o'clock and we finish at eight o'clock at night. And you know, I mean, um, Ham was Ham is actually the. Um, is the what do you call it the regeneration, regeneration officer. officer and said that I bet after three weeks you have no of, students you have no students because you know usually if you go for training you know half, half, the third week nobody came right yeah right and he was so surprised that everybody stayed, stayed on. on till the end so how do you discover skills that you have yourself how, how do you how do you how do you get them to think about the kind of resources they actually have so we look at their skills that they have and then start talking about the skills and what they can actually achieve. 
Right. Yes. And it's proven to be able to change mindset. It's proven, and that's what the the experimentation that we do ourselves with uh, with different beneficiaries. You see, and 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 last week we were in Sabah to work quite closely in a workshop of, uh, funded by British Council, um, looking, uh, you know, getting together academics. You know, we use <laughs> the same methods with academics, twenty from the UK and twenty from Malaysia, collaboratively together to work in five social innovation projects. So they went to a, the grassroots and they try to understand what is the um, the benefit beneficiaries required and needed um, to make sure that research that they do is actually impactful, is actually meaningful. And using the same methods that we use in, in Baluran, um, uh, Rural Poor, and also the, um, the one in Haringe. Yeah. Um, similar, we tweak it a bit, but this one was very intense, one week. <laughs> and it can be done. It can, it can be, be done. done. It we, can are, be done. we have changed quite a number of Academics mindset, the awareness. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I mean, in, in, in once it, one week is very very tough. But you know, you can see that you know some of them are able to change their mindset quite significantly. They became aware. Wow, the world actually is beyond my best my- research. Right. And that's how you nurture entrepreneurship in various different settings. Next week, we will talk about managing chaos through co-creation. And this has been the podcast series called The Professionalizing of Entrepreneurship. And it's a collaboration between EFM as well as the Professional Practice in Entrepreneurship, PPE. Now, we're going to leave you with some insight from Paula, founder of Pink Cushion Limited. And she was a former participant of the Haringey Project. Hello everyone, my name is Paula Balfe. I am the founder of Pincushion. This entrepreneurship course was great for me because it started at a time when I lost my job and I didn't have the finances to do a course, a business course, but I had started looking at my logo and thinking, how can I get this business going now that I haven't got a job? Um, So at the beginning, I was very nervous and I wasn't aware of my story and the course showed me how to develop my story, sell my business. I remember having to go out with one of the business challenges in the first couple of weeks and I had to go and promote my products and and tell people about my business and um, let them know who I was and what I was doing. Um, it's made me a lot more confident about the way that I look at my business and it made me believe more in my business and stick at it. I was, I remember um, Jane said at the beginning, you know, there's going to be pitfalls and what are you going to do when things get difficult? And I do remember that and it still keeps me going now. Um, So I've just got, for me, it's just a case of seeing something through to the end. I still haven't seen my business take off. I still haven't seen my cross stitch kits and my Um, cushions in major retail shops and that is my intention for my cushions and my designs to be there but also from the social point of view that I want people to make them in Africa. (laughs) 